the best language for backend development. Go. Go is as easy to write as JavaScript on the backend, but almost as fast as C++. That sounds pretty good. Um, I don't care for it. <laughs> Why don't you like Go? <laughs> easy to screw up. So Docker's written. Go. Yes, Docker is written in Golang. Um, a bunch of things that we use are, are written in Golang, and Docker is, is a big one. It's a complicated thing that we push to the limits at times, and a lot of the foot guns of, of Golang sort of show itself there in weird synchronization issues. We were the people pushing Docker the hardest. At some point, the, the actual Docker core developers asked for logins to one of our servers, and we gave it to them so yes. they could come in and like fix the bugs right on our server because we were the people reporting the most bugs. So at the core of it, of Golang, it's, it's really easy to package up a bit of code and say, and by the way, let's kind of run this in its own thread. Make this thing a Go routine. So I'm gonna execute this function, but have it run in its own thread. That's part of the language. Like spinning things off into their own thread is really easy. So spin everything off in its own thread and it'll go faster. It's up to you to make sure that they execute and they finish and they clean up on their own. Otherwise you leak them. Any of those functions are sort of touching the same bits. It's up to you to synchronize everything. So there's mutexes, there's things in place to, to help with that. And if you're spinning up a lot of containers all the time, you end up with weird situations where I can't remove that container because it doesn't exist. And it's like, what? Part of the system that's responsible for cleaning it up did its job, the other part didn't, and so now stuck in some weird inconsistent state at our core of our speed services Docker. So anytime you connect to a server, we're spinning up a lot of containers every day. We see weird issues. <laughs> our backend stuff is written in what? If we're writing a backend application, it's probably going to be in Node.js. I mean uh, server-side JavaScript. A lot of that is TypeScript now and ES modules, I mean that so sort of been following the landscape, but if we're writing an, an application for the backend, it's, it's going to use Node.js. The bit that you connect to on the server side is C++. When you're connecting through Speedify, you know, all your packet processing stuff on the server side, that's a daemon application running on the back end that's actually compiled C++. And we have bits of that data flow that are Rust. That's what our back end looks like. When Docker first came out, it was really fast. So spinning up a container took something like 80 milliseconds. And spinning up a container using like LXC, the old Linux containers things, took about the same amount of time. So it was like, why wouldn't I use Docker? It has all these cool features and it's just as fast as LXC. What, why wouldn't I? Um, but some of those concurrency issues, I mean, all that stuff was you spin up a new new container, they'd have Go routines that go off and do their thing. Over time, they kept adding all those mutexes and adding all the, you know, the locking and the concurrency stuff. And so it grew from 80 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds to 400 milliseconds to a little bit over a second. So you install the old version of Docker and you can start a container in 80 milliseconds, and install the latest and greatest, and it takes like 1100 milliseconds. Like it's crazy. When things finally got so slow, so we had to end up changing our architecture on that. So Docker really got burned by Go, huh? At the beginning, if they were starting it with C++ or, or even Rust, something where you have to be really deliberate with your threading model, they would have had a, a good thread, design. A design where it's like, okay, this is the thread that writes stuff to the file system. So we'll post messages to it. And we know that all that stuff will happen in a handful of sensible threads where you really have to think through which thread owns touching this thing. We wouldn't have this issue where we have thousands of Go routines. Now everything needs to get synchronized. And anytime you need to touch the file system, hold off on everything. I mean, it's so Golang, see, Seemed like it sort of hit at the right time, where people were a little bit fed up with where JavaScript stuff was going, but were kind of outgrowing what they wanted to do with PHP. And so Golang kind of hit the scene and got a lot of enthusiasm. There's a lot of good things going for it. It has a really nice standard library. It makes a server process handle thousands of concurrent requests. I mean, it, that stuff it kind of makes easy. A lot of projects, um, things like Docker and Traffic and Caddy and, and all these really cool like backend things, they're all written in Golang. And there's a good reason for that. You build a language and you make it really easy to do something but only use it the right way, otherwise you're in trouble. And I've been dealing with enough of those paper cuts for the last like 10 years that I really don't care for it. I mean, what about Rust? I don't think Rust is the right tool for every job. For doing massively concurrent things, I, th I think Golang is a good choice. I think Node is a good choice. Who designed it? It came out of Google, I, I think around 2007. Big names in you know, language designs. So you have people like Ken Thompson and Rob Pike behind it. Yeah, so Ken Thompson, the inventor of Unix? <laughs> Yes. In the 19, <laughs> was it 70s? Something like that, yeah. So the, the good thing if you're Google is you could hire people that basically invented computing. <laughs> so they mostly didn't like C++ and put Golang together as a kind of an answer for that to give them a better language to, to develop stuff internally, you know, their, their core systems. One of them was hired by Google and not allowed to write C code because he refused to take their competency <laughs> test. <laughs> Sounds like plausible uh, folklore, but yeah. <laughs> this was a lot of fun, guys. Have fun. Thanks for watching. See you all online.